Hello, it's Nicolas Polymonacos, aka Sparkles of Gold. Welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you've ever shown up here, welcome. If you're into what I'm doing later on and you figure out something that's use of you, you press the subscribe button, comment down below, go to my website, sparklesofgold.com. Today, we are going to talk about Venus and Gemini and the ingress that happens on the 22nd, which I'm releasing today. Um, it's going to be here until about the 17th of July. So um, I'm going to, in the beginning of this video, talk about three to four important dates. And then afterwards, I'm going to talk about it, what it means for each rising sign. So if you want to skip ahead, go right ahead. You'll see the chapter markers down below. By the way, it takes me a little bit to do that. So if you get to the video early, just give me a second to mark those chapters. But um, that's what's up. On a personal note, I want to thank everybody who's come to my channel in the last 10 days to subscribe and to participate and sign up for my newsletter, which is the newsletter is the number one thing to connect with me. I'll be putting out stuff here soon. Uh, thank you so much. I also want to say that today's a big day for me because I'm releasing this video, making this video on my Venus return. It's also my Mercury return in Gemini. Um, this is a seed moment in the ritual as it is everything for me and I'm going to check back in a year to see what's going to happen to me with this YouTube thing but today's a big day I'm just going to do the video but I just want you to know deep down in my core and in my heart that my intention here is bigger than this transit and bigger than this video you understand you feel me so if you if you're into that throw your intention and the energy that way too um, I I'm so curious to see what's going to happen with me here in a year. So um, on that note, let's just jump into the chart here and I'll pull it up. Oh, well, it's already up there. It's already up there. So uh, we're going to take a look at things here. And um, uh, right here, this is June 22nd, 534 Pacific time is when this actually begins with the Venus and Gemini. And um, we're, there's Venus and Gemini, zero degrees. Welcome. Welcome to the world of Gemini, Venus. You've been in Taurus for a while, where, which is your home, actually, and where you were flowing. But, man, did you have did Venus have some interesting chapters in that story connected to the eclipses, to the node with Uranus, Saturn. There's just all types of stuff there. And now Venus is being freed up a little bit in Gemini. There's a um, movement that's happening, and that's the key word to this video is movement. And I want you to have that in your mind of what Venus is relationships, love, resources, value, what you value, how you value yourself, the more modern way of thinking about Venus. Um, but yeah, money, resource, resources, relationships, all types of, them, uh, of relationships. And there's Venus in Gemini where the world opens up uh, from being in Taurus in the, in the steadfast, rooted piece of land. And it uh, just, uh, Venus moves out the door of the house, basically, and starts to check things out that's around its vicinity in, in, in Gemini. Venus in Gemini, the beautiful butterfly is what I'm uh, on a sub-level calling this video. And what happens with butterflies and what happens with movement and Venus, the socializing sign that it is in Gemini, which basically is all about socialization in the sense of checking out all different types of people and places. Uh, um, if you think about it as a butterfly that goes from flower to flower and lands and hangs out for a little bit and goes to the next flower or the next garden, that's the energy behind this. And there's also a little bit of luck in this transit too. And I will get to that uh, in a second here of to why, because it makes a certain relationship with another planet here. But on the base core level, Venus and Gemini is, is appreciating all the little things around itself and branching out and connecting with those things or people or places. Okay, so let's just not forget, here's Mercury at nine degrees. I have that. I have Venus at nine degrees do you, or zero degrees. Now you see how this is for me? <laughs> You see what kind of video this is for me? Um, we just entered the solstice uh, the day before. Happy solstice, happy cancer birthdays. I know we're in cancer birthdays, but this is half of the cancer birthday time is filled with Gemini energy uh, and filled and, and imprinted with a lot of Aries energy here. And this Jupiter, Chiron, Mars, and Moon that is happening today, Moon's going to leave, but there's an imprint here. And you know, when air and fire get together, they have a certain type of relationship with working with each other. 
Um, the last several days and the week before, on a side note, Mars and Aries has been was coming over Chiron, and you don't see it in this chart, but there's also a planet or a, a sim, Aries, a goddess of discords involved here. There's a lot of push, a lot of push from the Aries part of the world, even with their wounds showing and the processing and the healing of their wounds. And I'll get to that here in this part of the video because it actually is connected to to this Venus transit in a in a uh, in a chapter of the story of the Mars and Chi, uh, Mars and Aries and uh, Chiron and Aries story. Okay, so there's the 22nd, Venus and Gemini ingress, okay? I'm gonna bump up here to, um, oh, I'm gonna have to go backwards here on my chart. Uh, I'm gonna bump up to 28th of June. And the reason is, and I'll switch this up for you. Whoa, oh, 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 hold on there, hold on. Why, is, it's not stopping, it's got a mind of its own. <laughs> uh, you see how I'm living the Gemini life all the time? Um, so. Yeah, so there we go. And then I'm gonna switch this up there. Okay, so here on the 28th of June, we we have Venus at seven degrees, Gemini, and here's Jupiter at seven degrees. Now, you could see this blue line here, it's called a sextile. Everyone does this charts different. You don't need to know what the hell the blue line is, but it's like basically uh, they're 60 degrees away from each other. And this goes to the point I was making just a minute ago about fire and air getting together in a way. And Jupiter and Aries is bringing its benevolence, its confidence, its expansion, its abundance in Aries. And it's connecting with this Venus and Gemini who's moving from here to there. And we're also about, the, it's the relating part. So there's this uh, more air underneath the butterfly wings of Venus and Gemini. And, and Jupiter and Aries is is um, making this space bigger, okay? Now, on a more even practical level, if we think about resources and money, this is a big deal actually because Venus Venus ruling that uh, um, is getting that benevolence, that abundance, and what I mean by luck that Jupiter can bring and fortune and a little bit of a twist. And it might not be a big situation, like obvious, but it can be, but it brings a little bit of that. It brings some of that with its relation to Venus. So you could see here on the 28th and the couple days before and the day after, this is flowing from the Aries part of your chart to the Gemini part of your chart. And this is positive and amazing, and it can be amazing. Um, if what happens in those socializations, those connections that Venus and Gemini is making, the butterfly moves and getting the information and, and, and receiving praise and giving praise and acknowledging the beauty in wherever, whatever flower it goes to, and it happens vice versa, and you combine that with this Jupiter and Aries of just the, the, the will and the showing of self of like how positive that is and then the benefits that come with the combination of that you could see in money issue, uh, money situations resource situations love situations how this can uh, bring about a huge breath of fresh air right and lead to other things so that's the that's the 28th of june um i'm going to do something really quick and take a look to remind me here and the next date i want to look at is actually the sixth, the sixth here. Um, my program has got a mind of its own today. Um, is the sixth, and why? Why am I going to look at the sixth? Well, I'm going to look at Venus now, at 16 degrees, right here, 16 degrees Gemini, and there is Chiron at 16 degrees. The beginning of the video, I mentioned Chiron, and it's in its healing journey and its process in the sign of Aries or anybody who has Aries planets. Or your Aries rising, a lot of action's been happening there the whole year for you. Um, I feel for you, uh, uh, my Aries people, Aries rising. You get a hold of me, by the way, and you tell me a story because I like doing readings for you all. I like to do I like to do readings in general because I'm I do this and I like doing this. But my one-on-one -on -one consultations is where I'm based out of for 20 plus years now, and and that's my life. Um, so I love doing it. And anyway, for the Aries planets, whether you have some support from beautiful Venus who comes in and says, hey, you know, like, what's your story, uh, Aries? I, I, I haven't seen you in a while, or I just saw you the other day, and what's the story with, hey, what's, why, what's, what's that wound you have on your arm? <laughs> and Aries will be like prideful about that, and she'll, well, hey, you know, I'm coming back from this deep-seated wound I never knew about, right? And, and this wound has always been hidden, but I, I find that 
the way I deal with it is, um, and been healing myself is through certain things that have happened this year, but I also happen to start to see the wound in other people. And I, I learned about helping, I learned about my wound by helping those other people with the same wound. At least that's what's going on to this point in the story, Venus and Gemini. And Venus and Gemini are like, hey, maybe there's this person that could help you. Maybe there's this resources that I could bring into your world. Or, you know what, we're all wounded. It's okay, come into the circle. The, the 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 positiveness of Venus and Gemini, looking at things from different angles, and the movement of the energy mixed with Chiron and Aries here can bring a different way of looking at the wound, and a different way of treating it, and a different way of relating with it, and relating with others who might have it or who have wounds in general, and sharing the story of not just the healing part, but what it takes for one. To, to look at themselves and their self-esteem and to put themselves in the world full force the only way the way Aries does and um, that's a good thing so that happens on the sixth thought I sneak that one in there um, I want to jump to um, a funny date an odd date I'm gonna go back to um, you're gonna like why 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 are you doing this um, and this is this isn't it's relevant we go back to the June 29th here, Venus and Gemini is eight degrees, right? Just past its, its uh, sextile with Jupiter. But the reason why I'm bringing up this eight degrees in Gemini is because this is an important date down the line. The reason is um, on September 3rd, Mars will be in Gemini. That, that transit starts in August and it's an eight month transit because Mars will be going retrograde in Gemini so for you Gemini's and Gemini risings and all that this is the biggest transit of the year for you and for a lot of people it's a hardcore it's gonna bring up a lot of stuff and it's gonna be hard at times well whatever the case is on September 3rd Mars and Gemini is gonna hit eight degrees so at this point in June 29th right there we see a chapter in the story for later on because Mars is going to pass over this moment in this place, okay? And Mercury just did it in the last 24, 48 hours. And not only that, when we get to um, January 12th of 2023, um, that's where Mars or Mars and Gemini will finish, stop going backwards in its retrograde and move forward. And it does that at eight degrees. That's a little little treat for you, a little little side note for you there. Um, uh, okay, I want to jump to, I'm just going to jump to the 13th, actually, of July. And why? Because it's an amazing day and week in general. Um, so much is going to happen that week. And I'll point it out for you. So here's the 13th, okay? So here's now here's Gemini at 25 degrees, okay? And there's... Saturn retrograde going backwards at 24 degrees. So Saturn is making a trine with Venus and Saturn is about crystallization, the container, boundaries, solidifying things. In this case, it's good because it's bring, bringing a solidifying nature and, and a little bit of a, a good healthy boundary to this butterflying moving from here to there, Venus and Gemini. And, and this can actually start to, to focus it focuses this Venus in Gemini. And by this point, the transit's almost done. So this Saturn is coming in to support a story here and to, to keep Gemini focused, to keep this Venus in Gemini focused. But it's not in a restricting way it, because they're both air signs. They, they're flowing with each other. So th there's a give and take here. And, and the Venus in Gemini likes Saturn in, in Aquarius here. And, and Saturn in Aquarius, it's bringing its higher mind and its synthesis because that's what it does. Aquarius takes something that's already been made or there and takes it and brings it to its lab and tweaks it and does these types of things and then brings it out to the world as something better, higher, new, more progressively uh, forward. And if you've ever seen pictures of, of the constellation, maps of constellation of Aquarius, or sometimes you see the water bearer, that is rules, you know, that shows what Aquarius is. It's uh, like a woman or a goddess, like has a jug of water and it's pouring it onto back onto earth. Basically that water that's in the jug is knowledge. And, and, and Aquarius takes that knowledge that's already there, synthesizes it, takes it, tweaks it, and puts it out even more refined and more crystallized back into the jug and gives it back to the world as in the community-based feeling of Aquarius still keeping its autonomy. Okay, so that energy is mixing with the Venus in Gemini. But on the same period of time, 
We have Neptune and Pisces at 25 degrees squaring, squaring Mercury. So there's a caustic aspect here. And, and in this case, it might not seem caustic actually, because when Neptune gets together with Venus, usually it turns into dreamland. It's like fantasy dreamland and, and things aren't real start happening. You think they're real and there's these higher ideals of what things are and it's just non-reality basically um it's daydreaming in this case with venus and gemini it's um uh, love and romance and relationships and the ideals behind them uh, uh neptune will just bring it somewhere else with no boundaries and you could see how shadow problems could happen here because one can project the dream of love and romanticism ideal in relationships or in meeting somebody that you happen to meet that week or you just met and projecting that story on, on them or vice versa and then later on it's like it's not what i thought it was and i i put this situation or this person on a pedestal or this financial situation venus money resources venus i did this with it and i saw the dream and i think it's good to daydream and to have this type of stuff happen but you have to be careful of what's real and what's not and that's what this neptune and pisces squaring venus and gemini does for the 13th but for that whole week but as i said before saturn brings a container at the same time so you have interesting story here with venus venus is connecting with saturn in, in a crystallization form and, and uh um it brings stability and relationships and steadfastness to the Venus and Gemini. And, and as I wrote down here on my piece of paper, I said solidifying the butterfly, right? That's what Saturn's doing. At the same time, Neptune here is bringing this dream and we have to be, be careful with, with what's real and what's not. But also with this uh, Neptune and Venus, the, the conduit to creativity is there. So you can use this and you can use this in tandem with the boundaries in the container of Saturn and the crystallization of Saturn. There is a way to work this. So I'm just showing you both of this. Uh, I'm just so happens to be that day. I'm looking at the moon Pluto here and that's always a good time every month. <laughs> it's good times, good intense times uh, for the Capricorns. But that's what I wanted to point out to you here. And um, there are other dates and stuff. I again, I I'm looking at the 25 degrees of Venus here. It it, it Mars and Gemini during the retrograde cycle this year it stations retrograde actually at 25 degrees Gemini. You could see now what I'm talking about about this week because down the line in Mars and Gemini's uh, 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 transit that starts in August and goes for seven months but it goes retrograde in October at this degree. So you pay attention to this week because that degree is gonna be passed over by Mars during its retrograde cycle several times. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's it for that. So I know some of you, are, you're waiting to get into the signs, right? So um, oh, one more thing. There's a beauty. There's a beauty in Venus and Gemini, and here, here is how it works. And I'll tell you from my personal thing. There is something to moving from here to there and seeing things from different angles and how you can get stuck in movement. And what movement does and what different angles do from the top, from the side, from, from all types of places, y y you get information and cues and symbolism from the universe of how it can things can look from one person's point of view or, or one situation's point of view. And by having those different viewpoints, those different movements, um, it can help you in other stagnating uh, situations in your life. And you can look to this specifically in the Gemini part of your chart, but, and I'll get to the signs in a second, but just keep that in mind, your movement, and your movement is of beauty. There's a beauty, to, uh, move, that type of moving and finding your way, there's a beauty to it and a flow to it, and Gemini, is, has that innate gift of movement in its own way because of what it does with its speediness, with its rapidness of, the multifacetedness of, the juggling of many different things. And that is an art and there's beauty in that. So don't, you know, they're gonna, people are gonna say Venus and Gemini doesn't have a lot of depth or doesn't go deep. On paper it doesn't, but it does when it comes to this because of the moments. The, 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 cat the, the catalyst moment that happens, the alchemical, the magic moments that happens with Gemini, because it's there where it does go deep and it just happens within the movements. Okay, so let's, um, just, by the way, that button just says just face, that doesn't work. And I'm gonna do um, this one here. So 
Okay, so for each sign, um, I'm going to start off with Aries, okay? And um, Aries, Aries rising, and if you don't know your rising sign, um, you can enter that in apps if you need your, by the way, in order to have a rising sign in astrology, you need to know your birth time or approximate birth time. Because uh, I've had some people email me wanting to know, and they didn't know their birth time, unfortunately, and they couldn't find it. So that the rising sign's tied into birth time. If you don't know it, you can message me. I will tell you. You can leave something in the comments. You can go find an app online to do it. But message me. I'll tell you. Okay. So, um, but this also affects the sun signs itself. But I want you to look at the rising sign. And, and the first one we're going to deal with is Aries, my fiery Aries. You've already had a little bit of gems I dropped on you because of the Mars and Aries transit that you're having right now, because Jupiter and Aries is in your sign. Chiron and Aries is there. This Gemini. Venus and Gemini transit is happening in what's called the third house of, of short journeys. What's immediately around you, outside of your house, little jaunts, little little excursions that are close to you, and, th and that's where Venus and Gemini is flowing and bringing its magic. So this is more more movement and more um, the ability to see uh, uh, different types of places from different angles and views. Um, this also leads to something interesting that happens with the third house, and it has to do with inner knowledge. By, by looking at things around you and different things and participating and connecting with those things, um, you take on and you label and you start to process things logically. And a knowledge builds up internally because of that. And so I want you to think about that as this, you're, you're picking up different pieces words and sentences and environments and flowers and people uh, um, and that it is affecting you internally it's bringing in little facts and figures for you uh, for important reasons but I also want you to remember that um, it's good to show yourself in many different ways and since Aries is such a cardinal sign and cardinal signs initiate this is good for you fire and, and air flow together so on a simple way, short journeys, what's around you, picking up little pieces of information in those areas and the way you're relating with people and we'll bring in the money thing. There is different angles for you uh, to take information of how to bring in more resources and money into your world by living the Venus and Gemini life there for several weeks. Taurus, Taurus rising. This is happening in your second house and it, it's it this could be a little bit hard for you but it isn't at the same time because the second house has to do with money and resources basically possessions um so um i want you to think of it like this these days the industry on the internet for a lot of people including myself or what's happening has to do with the creator mentality of living that here i am an astrologer i have my one-on-one -on -one readings which are my juice one of my the things i have i have my patron I have merch, well, I'm going to have merch, by the way, down the line. I have different forms of income coming in, and it's kind of how the world works for a lot of people. So this transit in your second house, Taurus rising, this is the way to look at Venus and Gemini, that you're going to look, go to a possible resource here and a possible resource over there, and you're going to acquire information on it. And along the way, you'll be relating because you are Venus ruled sign, so you're actually going to have fun with this of looking at things from a different point of view and not so tunnel vision that could happen with Taurus. And so um, there is benefit there and, and, and knowledge to be acquired in re, uh, relationships that are started uh, in an in a, in a open, playful manner. And within those relationships and those connections are possible different types of resources that you would have never fought or thought or, or connected with before. So I'm trying to keep it really simple with you, but I want you to think about it as in like um, – little different places to pull in resources and also different types of relationships that you're not normally used to doing and and venus and gemini and its butterfly energy brings that energy into the second house of your chart gemini rising well this is all flow this is all flow for you gemini risings you love this venus is bestowing its beauty and its movement in our sign your sign um we're dealing with you know your body start moving it start moving it around start getting air through your lungs exercise you don't have to push it hard but people you, you know the rising sign in the first house is how people see you and also what you're projecting out to the world a lot of the time so if you think about what venus does beauty and the senses and harmony that's bestowed on you 
So you're looking good and there's more of a twinkle in your eye and you might be shooting that twinkle at your eye at everybody else and have fun with that, but also be be focused with it. I, I tell my Gemini and Gemini Risings to be focused with things because even when you try to be focused, you're just so on point. Besides beauty being bestowed upon you physically, you could be getting a, a new shirt, a new some new clothes, a haircut, you know, it happens in that kind of way. Or you have sun on your face and, and it, it changes the way you feel and your complexion. Those are simple ways, but I want you to think of things as as the life force, but refilling the life force or regenerating life force in you because this is what's really happening here with Venus and Gemini in the first house for Gemini risings and for Geminis in general. There, there's a replenishment of life force, there's a, a, a vitality that, that can be acquired or is coming out from doing the movement and, and, and not just doing the movement for mind's sake. Think about doing the movement as in participating with all your five senses in the universe and with people and situations, and that replenishes your life force. Um, also, a persona is a word here to use for this in the first house in the rising sign. And for some of you who are like video game players, you, you know, one of the most popular games that's been out there for years is Persona 5. And if you know what that game is, the different personas you take in, to, to, in different situations to defeat the characters or whatever. But I'm thinking about the word persona and the different personas Venus and Gemini can take and the Gemini can take will the flow from one persona to another or, or the chameleon-like vibe, the multifacetedness, it's just so on point during this transit that you just want to take advantage of it. But let it flow organically through your five senses. Remember, some of you came here for this pure reason. You Geminis have come to my channel, subscribe because of the word breathing, breathe. And it applies in this case my cancers uh cancer rising this happens in the 12th house of your chart it's a difficult house actually because technically on paper it deals with isolation and aloneness and confinement and you hear the word uh sorrow um misfortunes god man they're so brutal in the older text i i it's true to a point but i want but considering this is happening during your birthday month I don't think about it as so deep and dark like that. I want you to think about this Venus and Gemini movement from here to there and the juggling and the multifacetedness from a deep level, an internal level. And if by viewing yourself and stepping out of your sensitivity at times, uh, cancers can be very, well, they are sensitive and it's a feeling thing. And sometimes you can get stuck in your processes, like in, in the processes of emotions. And sometimes cancers, when they're off, they can't process the next step. Let's say it's sadness, right? And and they're in sadness and sorrow. And and so at some point you do have to move forward. And it, it that's a hard thing to happen sometimes depending on the cancer rising that you are. But Venus and Gemini brings a little bit of fluidness here. So to see things in your personal uh, emotional process, subconscious process, that you can look at things from a different angle. And remember the key word of this video is movement. Go from this end to look at your sadness or your contemplation. And it, by moving and going from here to there, you could see the value, Venus, in those different ways of, of feeling and seeing these unconscious processes and emotions. And there, by moving, you move through. So I want you to think about things that way. Um, when it comes to that and also sometimes you never know with something like this in the 12th house You can also possibly be bringing healing tools to help you deal with emotional processes and, and moving forward uh, Venus and Gemini too. I think uh, sometimes it shows the beauty in in others and and what I mean by that, bringing in others who can uh, help you process through or help you relate or help you deal with your emotional content. You, you have your pinchers out all the time, Cancer Risings, and you're feeling the sensitivity around you, whether it feels safe or not. And this movement actually is a safe way for you to go to a different place and not resist a different way of looking at your internal processes. <laughs> my Leo Risings, this is happening in your 11th house of community, friends, hopes, and wishes. This is like you're already flirtatious in general, <laughs> Leo Risings. You already like the attention. You like to give the intention. You're already about the generosity and receiving it. Well, Venus and Gemini just brings so much air to your fire that it just blows it up. And, and the meeting of people, the talking with people, the relating, the flirting, it's all there. But the 11th house isn't really about that. It's about the connection of the groups of people that you're involved in.
in the communities that you're involved in, right? And certain new groups too, because Venus and Gemini is moving and checking out little things around its peripheral, it just moved out from Venus and Taurus. Now it's checking out this little flower, this little place, this thing. And so there's a different type of movement happening. And I think this type of movement just is, pertains well for you, my Leo risings. You love it. I, I, um, uh, there's another word that deals with the 11th house and it has to deal with patrons. Like, you know, if there's certain things in community and it has to do with your hopes and wishes and, and a project and certain things you want to be filled on a creative level, because Leo, there's always something happening with you on a creative level. There's people out there possibly in that socializing that you're doing Venus and Gemini and a little bit of a, 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 a I twinkling going out with people and like, Oh, you do this. You show me this. Oh, that, Oh, maybe, you make the connection, right? You you make a new connection and the type of connection that could be benefit you later on in supporting your hopes and your wishes and dreams. Okay, but it 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 takes an organic, free flowing thing. I think sometimes we have to be careful. Like, oh, we know what the transits are, are happening, and like you're going to manipulate it for this reason. And it's like that's not how it flows. I think with Venus and Gemini, it's always you have to let the air take you and the wind take you where it may be, right? And and and. That movement is riding a riding the air and, and as a butterfly and going from here to there and just there's a certain flow to it. So think about that flow in your community, your groups and your friends and be open to seeing other people in new places, new, new groups, whether it's on the Internet or socially. Um, this is where it can flow for you. Um, my Virgo Risings, uh, this happens in your 10th house of reputation, your social status. Um, OK, so. Whether you have planets in your uh, 10th house or not, this is an interesting thing for a Virgo because a lot being Virgos are Mercury ruled just like Gemini's. Half this transit that's happening here, Venus, Gemini, there's a lot of Mercury and Gemini involved and it goes Mercury into Cancer, right? So for the first half of it, Mercury and Gemini is there moving around with Venus. And for you being Mercury ruled, this takes you out of your um, concentrated zone that could happen with Virgo risings and, and your preciseness and your need for detail. And when it comes to your career part of your chart and your social status part of your chart, kind of makes your version of being sociable. So instead of things having to be perfect around or a system that you need, you want to use the playfulness and the fun and fortune of Venus and Gemini and try at least in this career part of your chart to show yourself in different ways but not put this huge expectation about what's supposed to happen or it's not right or it's not perfect and then it starts that cycle of like I didn't do it right I didn't do this the shadow side of Virgo right the, the shadow side of like it wasn't right and I'm gonna tear myself apart because of it this isn't what this is about as a matter of fact this is about making mistakes actually and about taking things from different angles and and relating to people in the career part of your chart um and uh, dealing with your occupation and experimenting and having fun with something actually that you're familiar with which is the mutability of of, of gemini because virgo is a, a mutable sign so you you want to put yourself out there occupationally and, and your social status and have fun with this just picture yourself as is a refined for my Virgo Risings butterfly with the perfect wings and that you're using those perfect wings. It isn't just so they're perfect. It The wings are used to see things from different places. And, and if you're, let's say you're looking for a new job, this is a perfect time to go start researching the new job, and not just researching it, but putting yourself forward and showing yourself and, and showing your sociable side, okay? So that's my Virgo Risings. My Libra Risings, this happens in the ninth house part of the chart, you're loving this transit because Libra gets along with Venus and uh, with Gemini. So the social ability is happening and the movement and the flirting and, and, and the different angles and views is happening with, in the place of learning and higher knowledge and actually long-term travel. So you, maybe you got a trip planned, which means you're on point. Um, maybe you have a class coming up. Maybe there's a workshop. Maybe there's several things that you want to study. This is the time to do the research. This is the time to get this book, that book, that webinar that um that person that mentor to connect with to learn from and the and it could be multifaceted maybe it's not one thing that you're learning or wanting to learn maybe it's a couple things because it's venus and gemini and the ability to do both at once and maybe inherently they're really connected actually in the end connected movement and connection venus and gemini movement and connection now 
if we think about money and resources in your ninth house, this could be bringing in something that helps you with that. Or maybe you are a teacher or you're thinking about the other side of, of, of dealing with truth and knowledge and, and the spreading of that, that if you have some sort of a, a project you want to put together and you've done some research for that you want to teach and, and to bring in students, this flows for you too. So I'm showing you the both sides of the ninth house. Remember, long journeys, philosophical distru uh, 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 instruction, discussions, taking in phil 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 philosophical things. And then lastly, most importantly, Libra Risings. I want to uh, take this, uh, get a recorder and put it next to your bed or your phone or some sort of recorder. Or you get a pen in a, in a journal. And the reason why is this ninth house deals with visions and dreams too, okay? So if Venus and Gemini is there on a subconscious level in your dream world and your waking world, there are things coming your way and you wanna grasp them. You wanna go from here to there and grasp parts of the dream or parts of, of, of the goal that's coming through your visions. And so that's a quick little something for you. We'll start writing them down. Scorpio Risings. I love y'all. You're my one of my favorites. My favorite signs. I'm not trying to be biased, but I am. I, I have connection with y'all because I do. Um, this happens in your eighth house. Oh my god, eighth house. So damn depressing sometimes in the astrology world. Death and taxes and inheritance. And you inherit you inherit something, right? They, but it's because someone died. It's like that's the old school version of this. But I want you to think about it in another way. And this is actually a, an interesting thing. I want you to think about your anxieties. And what happens with anxiety or where it comes from sometimes and it's usually because there's a possible loss of control or there's a loss of control or, or um, uh, there's a possible gain that could happen so because that hasn't fully happened yet there's anxiety over what is happening there and since the eighth house deals with other people's resources and your connection to them and also deals with intimacy in a sense too that that the Venus and Gemini energy is going to bring a different outlook on this and i want you to use it because in on paper they're going to say this isn't flow for you but i i think it does if you think about the story of hermes and what hermes can do as in the hermes gemini is in a sense can the only one who knows its way to the underworld scorpio knows the underworld they're, they're, they're underworld people okay so it, it there's a connection here now, if you think about it in that way, like, oh, I know what the shadow side is and the light side. I know the extremes of things. I'm not afraid to go into the shadows. I'm not afraid to go actually in the eighth house because it deals with occult matters, okay, and shadowy things too. So if you think about it as underworld, light and dark, shadow and light, and what happens in that movement, movement as in Venus and Gemini, and seeing things from a different way and angle, then you can kind of start to... Uh, uh, use the anxieties and then use it in action and if it gets to a point of like you're dealing with the bank pe people places and things that deal with other people's resources that you need to connect with this is where you apply it you take steps and you do research and you go to one bank and i could have got the loan at that interest rate or um I'm going to go to this online thing and they have this interest rate. So you're doing Venus and Gemini, you're going moving there, but you're relating to and you and you want to come across open in a sense and not restricted. And you want to take that anxiety about possible gain and loss and turn it into something else. So use the fluidity in the uh, fluidity and <laughs> the multifacetedness a facetedness these words um uh, uh of Venus and Gemini to put yourself in a position eventually of power, which I know you like and love. Sagittarius rising, seventh house, partners, marriage, marriage, marriage. All of a sudden, are you, because Venus and Gemini is going to be in the seventh house, you're going to get married all of a sudden? No, that doesn't mean that. But you, the word it represents partnerships, business person, uh, partnerships, to all types of partnerships and the, the dynamics that are involved here and Venus and Gemini opens it up for you and it keeps things, doesn't go too deep and too far because my Sagittarian, my other mutable sign, your whole deal is to expand out constantly and doing it many different ways. Venus and Gemini and your relationship house of other, it just keeps it a little bit more central to you. And that's actually good. It corrals you in a little bit. And it might seem like a little bit of a foreign language for you, but Gemini always will be that way for you. And vice versa, the Sagittarius language will always be somewhat foreign, but the attraction to that, your attraction to each other and its energies of how you work, you need each other. You're on the polarity points. So it's this uh, seventh house, 
um, think about the other and in all types of relationships and to have fun in them okay and I know you like to have fun even though it might not be the way you normally do it I want you to be fluid in all types of your relationships and you're moving around and even if you're in situations where the relationships have hit a certain point and they're tough or they're involving other uh, uh, serious matters that there is different ways to look at this and actually to possibly come across or relate with the other person in situation in a uh, less pressured surface type of way and there's a beauty in that where it doesn't have to be serious all the time and you want to think of yourself as is is playing with the other you know and starting the uh, a restarting a relationship or starting a relationship in that way where you're playing with the ideas or playing with each other or playing with your personalities and that gives you freedom and in the end I know you like the freedom and that also gives the other or whatever is on the other side of you that freedom too. My Capricorns uh, risings, this has to do with the sixth house of your chart. I'm going to keep it really simple for you. Move your body. Your The bones in the astrology world, bones are ruled by Saturn. Capricorn rising, you're ruled by Saturn. Venus and Gemini in your sixth house of, of health and body and, and daily regimen in daily work you could see what's happening here now sometimes my capricorns get rooted in their ways and they don't move they're not going to move like a venus and gemini ever but you're going to take on some of the movement and the different ways of moving so i want you to think about your posture i want you to think how you're rooted and how your pillars and foundations are rooted in your body and i'm using saying pillars and foundations because those are words that are connected to saturn right things that you stand upon so if you're thinking about your body and your system is the body and the many systems your body has the bones is one your muscles holding them your nervous system all those types of things uh, um, they're interconnected and Venus and Gemini moving through here can show you different what the value of that is and and what that can do for your movement with your body in your daily regimen and not only that maybe you don't do this alone Maybe you do it with other people or you take a class and you're with other people and you're moving, you're moving with other people. And it's and it's and it, it's not a damn business transaction or some project that you've been working on that you've been climbing the mountain on. It has nothing to do with that. It just has to do with being in your body in a different way. And Venus and Gemini is going to show you the different ways and the different systems within your body. And then I'm bringing playfulness back in here, not to be so serious, because I know you Capricorn rising, man, you're constantly worrying on the inside. You got a poker face and no one knows that you're worrying because you always look like you have it together. But I know you don't always have it together. And, and a way to deal with that anxiety and that and that thing, and if you find your body's off, is to be a Venus and Gemini butterfly in that space of your chart that deals with health and your body and start moving it around and moving those emotions around and moving that anxiety around. You feel me? Okay. All right. So... Aquarius, fifth house, God, fifth house, creative output, sex, romance, uh, uh, children, um, <laughs> artistic endeavors, the arts, and you have Venus and Gemini moving through there. This is a powder keg of incredible fun trouble, actually, in a good way. And um, you use this transit. You flow with Gemini. There, there is the mind connection and the secret language, by the way, that happens between. There is a secret. If you all don't know this, there is a language, a secret language you never hear about and you won't know unless you have a ton of Aquarius in your chart and you're relating with Gemini or Gemini is relating with Aquarius. There is a secret thing that happens beyond the words, okay? And it's a rush and it's beautiful and here that secret language is connected to this creative output in your fifth house Aquarius risings and this is the time to get out of your scientific world a little bit in your coldness you're not cold I know you're not cold but you have that stigma and sometimes you can get a little, uh, a little bit up here right and and you use this Venus and Gemini to go in to start checking out new places new people maybe uh, new watercolors new tools to help your creativity, new sounds, new instruments, whatever the tools you bring in that are connected to creative output, to connect it to you, what your version of romance is. Venus and Gemini are gonna show you the different angles and you're gonna flow with it. It's not just gonna show you, you're gonna incorporate that because of the secret language between Aquarius and Gemini. And here is the beauty of it all. 
Imagine that, not having a rush of life, of life force in your body and, and possible like flirtations and love and smelling the flowers, all different types of flowers and kind of getting out of your head, but it, you don't even know that you're doing it. And, and then it's touching parts of you where you just want to express out and it's not in a, in a, in a completely logical, computer-like way that the Aquarians are known for. It touches your heart. And so um, enjoy this for a while you can, <laughs> uh, my Aquarius Risings. And please make comments, actually, if you're Aquarius Rising, I particularly your sign, I want you to leave comments down and just say whatever you want to say because I think you need to s express out. Um, lastly, my Pisces Risings, this happens in your fourth house of family, the past, memories, lineage. I'm going to give you the weirdest ver version of all this. It's not weird. It's just the Gemini version of it. Sometimes you have to go to the past and hear stories. And you do this about your life or your family's life or what, what the home life or, or it's connected to your father, actually, um, that you rehear or retell a story or several stories. You go look at old baby books. You go look at old pictures. You talk to family and, and relate to them in a way of tell me a story of when this happened. Sometimes uh, if you Pisces uh, uh, ascendants who I'm talking to right now in your fourth house, uh, think about it in a way if you were doing a little bit of research uh, on your past and like if you still connect to certain relatives in your life like one way of doing this is like what happened the day I was born like before I came out of the womb like what was happening the 24 hours before and I'll tell you and I'm used to doing this with clients who don't know their birth time and they have to find their birth time that I'll ask let's start talking to your relatives like ask what happened the day before and what happens is you start to hear interesting incredible stories about what led up to your birth and then it starts to seem good to go off on a tangent about the past and auntie said this and uncle was so and so was there and actually the year before i was doing this and you're like what the hell does this mean what the hell is this venus and gemini transit going through my fourth house of family uh memories home is because there's a movement happening in story and there's some gold for you to pick out there um it, it's it's a type of thing where um where you're you're seeing and hearing things that you've never have connected before that deal with your past now on a very practical level uh real world level this venus and gemini transit it could be you looking for a new place to live and going through craigslist or whatever the websites you are and you're looking at different places and you're trying to balance it and juggle it all about the possible places you're moving to or be temporarily staying um, or you could be going back to a, 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 a siblings or a parent's house temporarily. That's the surface level of this. But I want you to go on that trip I told you about, about story and about relating to past stories that have to do with your lineage and memory. Because here, uh, Mercury, Hermes, the psychopomp, is able to carry the message from the past to the present. That's an interesting version of it, isn't it? And that's the 12 signs. You know, I, I um, uh, thank you for going through this video with me. It's really hot in the room that I'm in right now. Um, it's my Venus return today. It's my Mercury return today. Um, I really like doing this. I'm only going to keep doing it and getting better. Um, as someone with Venus in Gemini who's sometimes been chastised by other people or made fun of because of it or like, oh, you guys are never going to go past the surface. I'm like, it's bullshit. Sometimes the depth and the core of something is the butterfly movement. Sometimes the refinement and, and the organic movement of going from here to there and, and the multi-view things and doing it all at the same time. You see my body? That's a dance. That's a movement. And that's deep. If you can remember that in the end, Venus wants to harmonize. And there's the money and resources part, but Venus wants to harmonize. If you can remember harmonization and movement together and what they do in tandem, you have Venus and Gemini. I know you're going to watch other videos and you're going to read other things about Venus and Gemini. That's the definition, and they're right too. But I'm just trying to keep it simple for you all. Harmonization and movement. In movement, there's harmonization. I'm going to end this video by spraying myself with Venus spray. And if you remind me, I'll tell you where to get this stuff. It's amazing. 
I'll put it in the comments if you remind me. I hope uh, you found something in this video. I hope here uh, uh, from the point now until July 17th that, the, that uh, y you flow with this Gemini energy. Have, remember, have fun, movement, that's the thing. But the, in that comes an immense deep knowledge. And so take on the archetype and be the ritual. And thank you for being in on my ritual here. One year from now, we're going to do the video and we're going to see what's happened to me. And my intention, my ritual right now, as always, comes from my heart. I need to make money. I need to do this. Venus, got it. It's happening. It will happen. Beyond the cash, beyond all that stuff, the pure resources, the heart from my heart and what I believe in is truth, honor, loyalty, and love. That is my code. And if I can expand that out into the world and you watching this right now find a piece of gold, the sparkle of gold in all that for you and you walk away with something of benefit and it's connected to your heart and your evolution, then I am so on point. And a year from now, I'm going to check in and I, I'm going to be there in a huge big way spreading my intention and love to the world thank you for listening to my venus and gemini rant <laughs> and i'll see you all in the next video